first off, welcome uh, to a tour through the dark side of the internet. Um, I'm Grifter. This is my good friend Metacortex. Uh, we're from DC801, uh, based out of Salt Lake City, Utah. Yeah. We don't often get that reaction, so thank you. Um, so who are we? We're these guys. Um, up here on stage. Yeah, up here. That's us. In case you missed that. Yeah, better. All right. Um, we, we're going to show you something here. It's actually pretty funny. Uh, so this is us. Uh, we're explorers. We like uh, to wander around back alleyways and things like that. Um, what's kind of funny is that we're both looking at the exact same thing, if you can tell. Like this is in the back alley of I don't even know where in Tokyo. We were just wandering around. Shinjuku. Is, is that where we were? Yes. We were in Shinjuku. I don't know. I wasn't paying attention apparently. Um, but so that's what we like to do. We actually um, spent a good portion of that trip and I think it's a good uh, metaphor for most hackers where we would get on a, on a train and then we'd say, okay, let's pick a random number. And we'd be like, all right, well, six. And we'd get off six stops later, we'd get out and we'd just start walking. We had no idea where we were going. I don't speak Japanese, neither does he. We don't read it, we just went. <laughs> because that's how cool shit happens. So, um, so that's what we like to do. Um, so I'm Grifter, uh, DEF CON goon. Um, also, uh, multiple DEF CON, DEF CON speaker. This is my sixth time on stage at DEF CON. Um, founder of uh, DC801, like way back in the day. I'm old. Um, and the uh, founder of, our uh, co founder of the 801 Labs hacker space uh, in Salt Lake City. Uh, yeah. And I am the same. Uh, a little bit minus the creds. This is my first time speaking at DEF CON, so I'm really excited. Um, big portion of DC801. Woo! Woo! Damn. It's awesome. Help run the hackerspace in Salt Lake City. So if you're ever running through there, come check us out. We will uh, give you free booze. Like legit, we really will. Okay, so, um, so just a quick warning. Um, I know this should go without saying, but um, we are going to talk about some things that are questionable. Um, now, who defines what that questionable is, you know, can be argued, um, but we'll just say, you know, uh, we can't promise you won't be offended by what we talk about. Um, we may talk about drugs, uh, murder for hire, um, hacking, cracking groups, carding, all the above. Um, and so, you know, if that makes you a sad panda, then uh, somebody else will probably fill your seat. <laughs> <laughs> Who in here is a fan of, what's that show's name? What's that, what's what's that, that show's name? That's House right. Of Cards, that's right. House of Cards. So uh, this is a nice little clip from it. Theoretically it should work. No audio? <sighs> Brutal. Now where are the sad pandas? Let me turn that up a little bit. See if that works. Oh. Maybe. Maybe. Oh. Help us, audio guy. You're our only hope. <laughs> it's the audio. It's the USB to the sound card. No, it's a bad cable. Please pause while we fix the audio. Do 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 No. Well, that sucks. Is it that? Yeah, it, because. Oh, I, yeah, yeah, no, 96% of the internet is yeah. accessible through standard search engines. Most of it's useless, but it's where you go to find anything and everything. Try to Big problem on there. Now, look at narcotics, hackers for hire. How do you access it? It's actually pretty easy. I can show you if you want. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Okay, first thing you need is Tor. Some people prefer IQP, but I think Tor is better. Tor is... Yeah. So Tor is very much better. Tor is very much better. Um, 
What we love about that is they're at work, and oh, dude's like, just hey. like shift over, brother. I'll just jump on like a dark net, like here at the office. Like, <laughs> it's totally cool. We're gonna go check out Hackers for Hire and you know, dark markets and whatnot. Um, so, am I on the desktop? So many audio fails. It's really painful not being able to see that see, screen. See anything? What are we looking at? Desktop. There we go. There we go. Now I'm on my desktop. Yes. Okay. okay. We're good. Hey. All right. All right. Um, so we're going to talk about Tor, connecting to it, using it, um, Onion sites. So those are, we'll get into that. Um, Bitcoin and how it works uh, and how to use it in mining Bitcoin, just like a little bit. We're, you know, like, we're not going to get into that too much. So uh, take it away, Meta. Yeah, still a couple more oh, slides. Son of a and we just went through these. Um, I really can't see that at all. All right, so um, finding what you're interested in, um, going out there and finding uh, you know different forums, darknet forums. There are um, various things that you can look up. Not all of them are nefarious. Some of them are just you know uh, places where governments uh, censor their citizens. And so it gives them the opportunity to have a platform where they can discuss uh, issues that are relevant uh, to things in their country or problems that they're having in their country without being black bagged in the middle of the night. So um, we'll also talk about things like hacker forums, Carter forums, things like that. Uh, we'll, I think we even throw up a couple where you can find them. Um, talk about search engines, so how to find what it is that you want. And marketplaces where you can buy physical things and actually have them like drop ship to hopefully not your house, but um, somewhere where you can pick it up and nobody knows who you are. Um, yeah, I think that's it. And we'll talk about some OPSEC stuff, tips to help you make you a little more anonymous. All right, Tor. I'm assuming most everyone here at DEF CON has heard of it. Um, under, tell them anyway. It is the Onion Router. Um, it, it is a series of routers on the internet that anonymize your traffic. Um, and notice the little warning at the bottom. The NSA will pick you out and put you on a list for searching for it or downloading it. Yeah, we've been on that list for a long time, though, so <laughs> we're, we're not really sweating it. Although, like, when you know, we saw the thing where it was like, oh, if you search for this or downloaded this in the last, like, it was like three years, then you're on a list. We're like, whoa, we're going, like, to the top of the list now because we're telling everybody about it at DEF CON. It's a great diagram from EFF on how it actually works. Um, the, uh, the only thing I do not like about it is the little uh, red arrow going to Bob that says, oh, it's unencrypted traffic. If you are sending HTTPS through, it will be, un or it will be encrypted on that link. Um, so we like to think of um, Tor a little bit like this. Oh, now it's working. Now it's working, yeah. Is it playing? Is it yeah, playing video. You know, you just, we're just jumping through all those little things, all those little boxy thingies. That's great. I do scream like that every time I connect a tour. <laughs> I, I gotta tell you, it was really annoying like, while we were making this presentation. So how do you do this? Um, there's a couple different options. Uh, you can use the Linux command line or Mac command line and you can apt get it or install binaries for it. Uh, and I, I'm mainly a Linux guy, so you'll see those on the slides. Um, and Etsy Tor, Tor RC and Etsy Tor Tor Socks are mainly where you do all the configuration for it. What it does is it starts a Sox5 proxy listener on your local host. You pinpoint anything to that port and you're running through Tor after it's connected. Uh, pretty basic, but even further to make it even more basic, they create the Tor browser bundle. It's a sim simple download. You download, install it, run the exe, it'll connect to Tor, launch a Firefox browser, and that whole browser is running over Tor. And it's pretty nice. It'll come with some additional plugins on it as well that we'll cover. Um, so more in depth, um, we'll run through these really quick because of demos. Uh, there's a whole bunch of information on configuring it. And let's see if we can connect to it live. The demo gods usually have been hating on me today. 
So we'll try it. You realize you have to scream like a lunatic now when you connect that. Right? <laughs> There we are. That, that's it. This browser is configured to use Tor. I clicked on it and we are now theoretically anonymous given any O days. OP delivers. What? OP delivers. OP delivers. <laughs> that's right. All right. Oh, sweet. That means you guys don't have to see that video. Um, that's an old screenshot. I just updated this today. Um, that didn't pop up just now after I updated. But that shows you connecting to the Tor network on older versions now. Um, don't need to play this video because it worked. All right. Once you connect, you'll see with the Tor browser, you will see it'll have a couple of plugins already installed. Um, the Tor options will be how you configure and use Tor. Uh, no script, which is important, use it. And HTTPS anywhere, which will try and force encryption through all, everything. Uh, very important to have even outside of Tor bundle, the Tor browser bundle. So uh, another way to do it is Tails. Tails is a live bootable distro. It's uh, Debian based and it will try and force absolutely everything you do to run through Tor. Um, it will, it, oh, there you go. Um, it tries, it, it will fight you to write anything to the disk so you will not leave any traces, you will stay totally anonymous. It's, it's great, it works really well right out of the box and comes with a whole bunch of software pre-installed. Um, open PGP, Pigeon OTR, you know, key pass, some important things. But most importantly, I mean, TrueCrypt. And unfortunately, we're gonna have to pour one out for TrueCrypt. Can I do that? Is that all right? Do it. Can I do it? Like, uh, sorry, sorry Rio. Pour TrueCrypt. And Tails will land you on another list as well. That's what it looks like once you actually boot it up in the normal mode, um, standard Debian desktop, um, nothing fun. But you can also force it to go into XP mode. <laughs> so, you know, you're, you're sitting in a coffee shop and you don't want anybody to know you're doing some evil hack soaring. No one's going to question an XP desktop. <laughs> All right. We're connected to Tor. Sweet. What can we do with this? We can do a whole bunch of fun stuff. Um, I like tunneling out of restricted networks. Um, that was fun. Uh, it's staying anonymous, you know, that whole bullet list that you guys see up there. Uh, where the fun really comes in, in my opinion, is the Tor hidden services. Uh, this turns Tor into a darknet. These are sites that live exclusively in the Tor network. You cannot reach them outside of the Tor network and uh, you can't really trace down who owns them unless you have horrid OPSEC like uh, Silk Road version 1. Most websites there will use the .onion address um, to reach them. Uh, oh, hey, we have a, a pin in there that we said put a pin in it and we didn't. Yeah, I mean we put a pin in it. I don't know what the fuck that pin is for. <laughs> there was a bullet point we wanted to make. We will move on. Right. Our bad. Um, hidden services is a uh, uh, you can see exactly how it works with some of the Tor documentation. It's kind of complex, way out of the scope of what we're going to talk about today. So moving on. Uh, finding hidden services. This is currently some of the, the hardest thing, barrier to entry when you're getting into Tor. Um, the, the notorious one is the hidden wiki. Most people like to use that. I have found at times it is extremely out of date. Most of the links in there are broken or dead. But you do find some gems. Uh, Tor find, another one, Tor search. Grams, I actually really like it. It is dedicated to searching uh, darknet marketplaces. So you actually type something in, it will search and index all those marketplaces and show you what you want across all the different ones. Um, deep web links and Reddit, no, those are not in Tor. You will be tracked going to those, 
because they are not .onion addresses, but good nonetheless uh, for links. And word of mouth. A lot of people, you know, spread onion sites by word of mouth and uh, links that they send their friends. Here's some fun sites that are in Tor that I think are of interest that I just wanted to put in here for no good reason. Uh, Pirate Bay is on there. Also keep in mind, uh, if you're downloading torrents that may be illegal, run it through Tor. Just because you download the torrent through Pirate Bay does not mean you're staying anonymous. My favorite, which was actually down as of a little bit ago, the assassination market. It is a crowdfunded assassination website. Now, regardless of if it's actually legitimate or not, is, I doubt it is. You pay Bitcoin in and you say, I want somebody to kill this person. And everybody starts putting Bitcoins in around it. And whoever proves, however you do that, that you assassinated this person gets all the Bitcoin. Um, there were some fun names on that list. Um, but unfortunately, we can't pull it up. But uh, Rent a Hacker is another good one. He will, he will penetrate anything you want for any amount of Bitcoin. Um, we might pull that one up later for the lulls. Uh, here's some good forums you can go to. Uh, TCF is pretty much the biggest carding forum you'll come across that I've seen anyway. Um, it does require a $50 um, entry to get onto it. They did that because of spammers um, getting on there. Uh, so once you get in, you can buy credit card numbers, identities, all of that. Um, a lot of fun, super cheap. We'll pull that up later. Um, Intel Exchange, a lot of people link to that one. It's mainly trolling on Illuminati stuff and the deep web and how to get to Miranda's web, which is fun. Uh, HackBB, kind of a nub forum. They do a lot of, you know, you run this sketchy executable <laughs> and you will get backdoor to anything you want. Uh, some marketplaces. Most people are interested in actually buying stuff off this. Um, you can check out the Reddit Darknet Markets. It'll actually have a listing on the side of the page um, with all the current markets, their statuses, whether or not somebody thinks they've been compromised, the quality of them. Uh, super up to date. Uh, most people use Silk Road though, uh, version 2.0. Um, Agora is a decent one, and my favorite actually, Evolution. Uh, we have purchased some stuff through Evolution, which we will show you later. So let's demo some of that. That should work. So I'm going to grab the Silk Road uh, URL, pop into Tor Browser could take a second, it's anonymizing. Hey, it works. So I created this. Nope, haha, <laughs> sucker. That time you get on DEF CON stage and can't remember your password? <laughs> Maybe not. I'm an idiot. Um, let's see if we can create one real quick. Ideas on username? I'm a terrible speller. What was that password? Password one? Someone yelled it out. One, 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 in case anyone cares. Oh, come on. This is terrible. Did 
What Meta doesn't know is that I changed his password and this is actually a psychological experiment about stress. <laughs> I'll be speaking about it later in the Sky Talks. <laughs> Re oh, restricted words. You can't have DEF CON in the name, apparently. Wouldn't be surprised if someone's trying to register that right now to kick me out. Hooray! <laughs> so, uh, what was that? It was like, he's saying that's how some, is that how someone new would get an account? Oh. And yes, you just sign up, boom, you're in. Yeah. That was a good demo, actually. Perfect. <laughs> Silk Road. So as you can see on the left, hey, a lot of people like buying their drugs through here. Um, but we have a whole bunch of other fun stuff. Um, we're, we're more interested in the electronics and the hacker stuff. So let's go ahead and hit up electronics and we'll just see what they have today. It's always changing. We never know what they have. Uh, Ooh, Wi-Fi hacking. Sweet. <laughs> Anonymous SIM cards. Virtual honey pots. It's probably a book. Uh, some Amazon gift certificates, maybe. USB drives, a lot of anonymous references. Hey, a drone. That looks like fun. First rated drone. Pirated movies. Yep. Hacker's Underground Handbook. Oh, that sounds yes. legit. <laughs> Order me up one of those stats. Um, so, yeah, so as you can see, there's, there's various things on here. Some of it is uh, less worthwhile than other things. Um, you kind of have to sift through things to find what you actually want. Uh, but uh, on a lot of these sites, we've found that you know, when you do find something that you're interested in, um, as long as the seller has been around for a little while, you actually get what they're selling. Like, so um, it's kind of nice. Like, you think like you're going to you're doing some back alley deal, you know, you're not going to get what you're looking for and then, then it shows up and you're like, you're surprised but you're also pretty happy. <laughs> <laughs> like if, you're not, if you're not willing to lose the Bitcoin, don't spend the Bitcoin though, I'd say that. This one looks fun. Ooh. Neuroscience kit. Is anyone actually going to try that? Yeah, sign me up for that shit. <laughs> uh, plug stuff into my brain. All right. Oh, that's a good run through uh, that. Continuing on. Ha. You don't need a video. That worked. Almost. Almost. Almost needed that video. <laughs> Carding sites. Uh, those are fun. You know, buy people's identities, credit card information, numbers, date of births, social security numbers at times. Um, as I said early, earlier, TCF, the, the biggest one, requires a $50, uh, depending on, you know, the, the actual amount changes due to Bitcoin's inflation or deflation. But it always is about 50 bucks, um, real world. Uh, CC, another fun one, it kind of looked kind of sketchy to try and buy something off of there, so I don't know how legit it is, but it was really good to actually see the prices of some of this uh, content. And, material. So let's do that now. Can someone take some pictures of us? Yes. Who knows how to take a picture? Because I want a picture of us up here. We're so egotistical. Here, I want to hand a stranger my camera. There you go. Oh, that one went down. Well, because that one's down, we may have to do TCF, which I'm not happy about, and I'm burning an identity doing so. No, I don't have to log in. Ah, I think I do to have to see prices. Oh, well. I'm ousted. Terrible. <laughs> oh. 
that's just how I look. Never mind. All right. So let's check out some. Uh, See if we can buy some stolen identities on here. Uh, virtual carding, physical We carding. do not condone the theft of identities, <laughs> nor the trading thereof. Um, but what is very interesting about this is that we learned what your identity is actually worth to someone else. Um, so try to keep that in mind when he starts pulling up the cost to purchase some of these things. Um, you know, you hear about it in the media all the time. You know, identity theft is rampant and, uh, like how many millions of credit card numbers are stolen from you know different retailers every day. Um, this is what they're brokering for, um, and it's pretty telling. I've never actually seen it this low. A dollar each. You are worth a dollar. <laughs> Let that sink in. Uh, so here we go. Is some of the stuff that they will actually give you. Credit card number, expiration date, CVV, name on the card, country, state, city, address, and zip. Six dollars. <laughs> and if you want a European, that's ten. Everybody hates us. <laughs> Say again? Was that? The chances are actually pretty good that it's going to work um, because they're, they actually are reviewed, these sellers. Um, there is a review system similar to Amazon um, where people will say like, I actually got this or I had this, it worked for X amount of time. Um, so like we highly recommend you guys going out and, and doing this, like going out and saying, looking I'm serious, at going this. looking. No, looking. I'm serious. <laughs> looking, guys. Holy crap. <laughs> like, <laughs> damn it. Um, <laughs> Forgot where I was for a second. Um, going out and looking, I mean, it's, again, it's really interesting from a research perspective to go out and say, okay, like, you know, again, what are, the, what are we trading at today? That kind of thing's like, you know, Meta's looked at this so many times, he's like, ooh, the market's low today. Like, it's, but it's interesting to find out um, how these people think, how they work, um, what they're collecting, why they're collecting it, and when you start talking to them about what they're selling, it, they're you know, fairly open about it because they know they're anonymous too. Sweet. Moving on. Again, no video. But here are some fun things that I really like to look at. We can buy some fake IDs about driver's license or even at the bottom, fake passports. What if you need to disappear due to some sketchy shit? <laughs> yeah, it's not playing on tour correctly. Um, so these are fun. What I have heard is actually the Reddit, our fake ID is legit and is super high quality from all the confirmed vendors in there. So you don't even have to go through tour to get some of this. Go through tour to do some of this. <laughs> <laughs> you get nothing. I, yeah, I, thanks. Take a picture of our food. Focus. Halfway to focus, all the way down there. So while we're pu pulling up fake oh, ID care, sites, so. <laughs> we're going to take some shots. Sorry, I don't drink. Um, once again, Salt Lake City. <laughs> <laughs> But everybody does a shot. All right. That means all of you. Go ahead. Yeah. All right. Ready? Love for a new speaker. Cheers. Thank you. Wow, oh, that was really good. It had like the the nicest blend of hydrogen and oxygen with it. Like it seems like almost double the hydrogen. Though you might want to look into that. Ooh, it's a 2014. A 2014. Oh, good That's a good year. year. Well. <laughs> <laughs> smooth. Smooth. 
Thank you, sir. Don't call me sir. I'm sorry, sir. <laughs> so here's some uh, fake passports you can buy from all these wonderful countries. Um, let's look at USA. U S. No. All right. All right. We'll do that. Actually, we, we found that the U.S. passports are the most expensive, um, like with all our looking around and things like that. It seems like um, something about them makes them very Highly expensive. Valuable. It's weird. I wonder what that is. <laughs> I will not confirm nor deny any activity. Because it comes full of freedom. Because it comes full of freedom. <laughs> So that's like a scan of one of those fake uh, passports, 28 pages, you know, clear holographic laminates. It should look legit. We've seen some people actually take pictures of theirs and they'll have all of the UV stuff in it, which is awesome. Uh, basically, you send them all the information you want them to put in there and a headshot and you get a passport, theoretically. Right. Yeah, we cannot confirm nor deny the quality of these documents, but they're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Passports are a little pricey, $1,000 per for a U.S. passport. Um, let's see if we... I like Japan. So let's, let's look at that. Yeah, They like Japan, too. <laughs> yeah! Well, $700 for a Japanese passport. Not too terrible. Um, if you really need to get away and actually use it, it not bad at all. There was somewhere that we could do that. Let me, let's see if we can pull this up. Yeah, they took that off of uh, grams. Yeah, so that's not coming up in grams anymore. I think this is the one that I like. Oh, no, that'll work. Oh, those are uh, driver's licenses. So $200 to any driver's license. Um, oh, there we go. There's a picture of some of the UV stuff you do. Um, let's try the last one. Oh, Lenovo Power stuff. I hate you. That's what I get for using a work laptop at DEF CON. Oh, no, that's on video. They'll know. No? Was that the one we already went to? Yeah. Or the middle one? I don't know. We're just pulling them all up. Ooh, this is the one I like a lot. Yeah, that's good. Free shipping. <laughs> what a bargain. Yeah. Can you get big temple recommends on this? <laughs> I'll get to work on that. Services, maybe? I can't remember how to get there. Oh, pricing. There we go. There you go. So, US 700 euro. Yeah. And then the, you can get driver's license, ID cards, you bundle them all together. The thing I like about this vendor is for more money down at the bottom, he will actually stamp it with other countries' stamps to make it look more legit. Yeah. So it looks, it looks like you've legitimately traveled with that passport. You know, you can rough it up a little bit, make it look like it's, you know, been in use. It gives it, uh, you, you fly under the radar a little better, um, spend less time. I can tell you from using my legitimate passport that when I had one that was, you know, nearly full versus having a brand new one, uh, they spend a lot more time looking at the brand new one, so. Who's that? <laughs> so this is where we were going to demo grams, but most of those pass since we wrote these slides, the passport stuff has fallen off of grams, and it's mainly drugs. So next slide. No video for you. So what can you do with all these passports? Um, I like to think of myself a little bit like this.
Sorry, it might be playing the whole movie. Yeah. <laughs> just, just enjoy. Yeah. Yeah, like that. <laughs> That's what I do. Sweet. So now we've seen all this awesome, fun stuff that we can actually get. Uh, how do we do it, you say? Uh, Bitcoin, obviously. Uh, most people on the internet try to use it. They do not accept DefCoin, as far as I'm aware of. <laughs> that may change. Keep mining. Uh, basic Bitcoin, transfer money into a wallet, and uh, when you buy anything, your Bitcoin goes into an escrow account. When you get your items, the escrow releases the Bitcoin to the seller. Um, yeah, and then you have them ship it to a location, and we'll cover more details of shipping in the OPSEC stuff. Yeah, more on Bitcoin, mainly for reference. So get these slides wherever they're distributed. We'll keep going. Um, more Bitcoin stuff, we're continuing going. Uh, all right. But uh, Bitcoin tumbling, that's another way to keep Bitcoin a little more anonymous. Basically, you throw money into a pot while everybody else is throwing money into a pot, and then they pay you back in certain small increments here and there, so it makes it really hard to track what goes in, what goes out, who it's going to, who it's coming from, things like that. If you're doing super questionable stuff, some people argue against tumbling, it doesn't hurt you get most of your Bitcoin back, minus a small tumbling fee. Uh, so here, we'll talk about some considerations uh, with Tor to help make it a little more secure over some of the stuff. Um, correlation attacks, uh, those are probably the biggest threat to Tor, as far as I'm aware of, currently. If somebody owns an entry node and an exit node, they can map that connection back through, see who originally came into and where it's originally going to. Um, there was a small semi-correlation attack that was um, talked about on the Tor blog a couple of days ago where there were uh, malicious relay nodes injecting headers into the packets to be able to track uh, some of the darknet sites. Uh, they have patched that and kicked those nodes off the network as of a week or two ago. Uh, some browser exploits can identify you. Uh, if there's an issue in the JavaScript engine like there has been before, oh, JavaScript engine in Firefox, that'll allow it to ping back a server not over the Tor network. Uh, that'll identify you real quick. Uh, Cross-site scripting, stuff like that. Uh, some considerations for Bitcoin to make them a little more anonymous. Um, just like, keep in mind the entire blockchain for Bitcoin is public. You can track absolutely every transaction that's ever happened over the Bitcoin network. Um, tumblers help against that. Uh, but a lot of people transfer large amounts of money in millions of small increments all over the place. So it just becomes impossible for any one person to track all of it. Who your slides. Some OPSEC stuff. You are going to break it. There you go. Thank you. Um, let's see. So uh, we're going to talk about some things to uh, just be aware of and try behaviors that you can do to try to make sure that you uh, remain anonymous. Um, so. Uh, stay updated on the Tor blog, obviously uh, making sure that uh, finding out if there's any vulnerabilities. There was recently, obviously, a, a large vulnerability in Tails, things like that. Like making sure you're uh, looking to see whether or not uh, the tools that you're using are kept up to date, what features are coming, what features are leaving, things like that. Um, so, uh, you know, as Meta stated earlier, keeping your Tor browser updated. Um, stay updated on the status of markets, um, and use the subreddit for that. Again, the subreddit itself is not uh, on tour, so you're in the, on the clear net there, so uh, just be wary of whatever activities you're doing, but browse around, see what's going on on there. Um, browser segregation, obviously don't log on to Facebook in the same you know, browser that you're using <laughs> to you know, get on and browse you know, dark markets on tour. It just doesn't make a lot of sense now, does it? Uh, 
Using a VM uh, specifically for your Tor connections or, or Tails, um, this here is my Tails laptop. I think you guys, when he was talking about Tails, I booted it up into Tails real quick into the Windows 8 um, you know, mode. So again, sitting in a coffee shop, you don't look uh, like you're doing something nefarious. This, uh, this laptop also does not have a hard drive in it. It literally has the Tails disk. That's it. Um, so you can also uh, boot to like a, a flash drive. I actually have, I think I got Tails in my pocket. Let me see. I do have Tails in my pocket, and that's actually a DC 101 flash drive from two years ago. Um, so represent. Um, and then, like, like we were saying here, even better is like use something like this. Like have something that's dedicated specifically for you know, what you're doing on tour um, or just using Tails, that kind of thing. Um, it's just another layer of security, and it gives you, uh, I guess, a warm, fuzzy feeling inside. Not only that, but if your host OS is compromised, it can see everything your VMs are doing. Indeed. Um, so actually getting items. So you can see up here we do have a couple of things. So we, we have purchased some stuff. This was the uh, safest things we thought we could bring. Um, so um, don't send it to your house. That, that make a lot of sense there. We got that clear. Do not send it to your house. Okay? Like, so you're on a dark market and you're like, oh, yeah, dude, yeah, send me that. Sweet. Drop ship that bad boy. Oh, by the way, here's my address. And it's like, it doesn't make a lot of sense to be anonymous if you're giving away all your docs. Um, but send it to a P.O. box or a UPS store. So um, we would recommend also, uh, do we recommend this? If you wanted to do this, where's my lawyer? There you go. Um, if you wanted to do something like, let's say, hypothetically, you were to get, on a, get a P.O. box or a UPS um, box, order a fake ID, then take that fake ID, burn the box, and go and open another box with said fake ID. Now you have another layer in between you and your real identity in meat space, and that's a good thing. Um, so you can do that. If you have access to an abandoned house or building or something like that to drop things to, also, swell. Not gotta, right next to your house. Not right next to your house, not the neighbors, whatever. But if you happen to be lucky enough to live in a neighborhood with a lot of crack houses, then fantastic. Um, so uh, never open your questionable content anywhere that you can be visible to others. I mean, that, that should go without saying, but it's just, you know, you're like, oh, sweet, here's my, you know, I, you know I'm not even going to say your things. <laughs> I'll, just, I'll leave that to you guys, you nasty. Um, so wait until you get home. Uh, try waiting a week or two weeks to pick something up. If you're anxious to get something, then you're going to be um, more likely to get caught doing whatever it is that you decide to do. Um, if somebody is waiting for you to receive something or there's an idea that maybe you are going to get something that you shouldn't have, um, you know, most agencies aren't going to sit around for a week or two weeks total for you to you know, pick something up. Um, also, if you want, walk in, open up the box, maybe look at it, oh, it's there, or don't even do that, just go up and say, did I get a package? Yes, you did. Okay, great. And leave. Come back another time, pick up whatever it is that you need to pick up sometime later. Pick a random day, go back then. Um, even more, don't reuse identities. Aww. Uh, <laughs> Carding forum, sad. I liked that one. Yeah, don't don't reuse passwords and disposable emails are available here. Um, again, Gorilla I, mail. Oh, I already fantastic. talked about this. My my flow is jacked, but I already talked about this. But you know, opening a mailbox using the fake ID, la da la. Um, we bought some stuff. Uh, there's some stuff. This is our baby monitor. <laughs> so it runs over a GSM network, and you put a SIM card in it. Um, you if can you call, can see that. you can see it, like, so you call a number uh, that is associated with the SIM card and it will listen to the room. So if you want to listen to your baby, in, baby. The, in the nursery, then you can call the number and now you have a, a baby monitor that works at any range. Um, and it's small. Yeah, or you discreet. SMS to it and it will auto dial you back. Um, when it reaches a certain uh, level of decibels, it will call you because it knows there's activity. 
Um, so there is the mini baby monitor. Um, that's what it looked like when we bought it. That's reviewing the order there. Yep, that baby monitor looks great. Um, and then here's the confirmation email that was sent. Um, so, you know, just saying, hey, this is when expected. Yeah, that's actually pretty nice. It looks pretty professional to me. And then... We got um, tracking. Yeah. <laughs> UPS tracking. It's on its way. All right. We're just about out of time. So we're going to leave you with some parting thoughts. So clearly everything we're talking about here is a little bit... We, we've had some fun with it. We've had some laughs. It's a little tongue-in-cheek. And some of it falls into a gray area. Uh, you decide whether it stays in a gray area or you take it further than that. Um, also, where you live or where you're located can change whether or not that gray area is no longer a gray area. So be aware of, of that and, and stay anonymous. Um, like anything, dark nets can be used for good and evil. Um, the good side, again, if you live under an oppressive government, then this is a fantastic tool for you to be able to communicate with people just like you who don't like what's happening in your country. And you can try to get together and maybe cause some change. If you're interested in what's going on in the world and you want to talk to people who are in these situations, dark nets are good for things like that. Don't take the media's word for it. Get out there and read it straight from people's mouths. Mouths. Um, straight from their keys. Straight from their keys. So they have legit purposes, you know? They're not just for shady shit, but there's a lot of shady shit. <laughs> um, and in our view, uh, Metacortex and I believe that this is the future of how we will communicate. It must be the future of how we communicate. We can't trust our own governments. We think we live in the land of the free and we don't anymore. It's sad, but it's a reality. So start learning this stuff and start being those pioneers who help everybody else figure out how to be anonymous, encrypt their traffic, and stay safe on the internet. Thanks. Thanks.